The secret to success. The secret to getting rich. What are the secrets? Oh, boy. I'll tell you. In this article from Shredder.News, they say YouTube skater Dale Decker says YouTube is the new nine to five due to the saturation in the field. Apparently, he's quoted as saying that there's that old saying that if you do what you love for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. And he said, that's effing BS. He's completely wrong. Dale, I disagree. I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you guys about how to be successful. And there is some sad realities to this. Life is a path. You're on that path. You cannot go back in time. If I could, I'd go back and I'd buy more Bitcoin and I'd hold on to it. I had a laptop with 20 Bitcoin on it and that laptop broke, got destroyed. And I didn't care because it was like $18. <clears throat> now, um, what does 20 Bitcoin come out to? Uh, holy crap. A hundred. <laughs> wait, is that a million dollars? Wait. Yeah. A million dollars? 52,000 per Bitcoin? 20 Bitcoin? Holy crap. Well, my friends, I can't go back and I can't change that. But understanding how to succeed in life and what it means to have a job and be successful on YouTube, that's what we'll talk about. And I'll give you some pointers and I'll give you my thoughts and my breakdown. The reality to life is this. If you do what you love for a living, you will never work a day in your life. And it's true. I can break down why this guy is wrong. But first, let me give you some context. And talk to you about how to be a successful YouTuber, and, and, and we'll get into all of that. So let's, let's build the context first. This is about skateboarding, but you can ignore the skateboarding. Uh, there may be some esoteric terms, but I, I'm, I'm not interested in talking about skateboarding. I'm interested in talking about building a YouTube channel, building social media, making money, being independent, and being successful, and beating the 9 to 5 grind and what that means. <clears throat> so, they write. Oh, nope, nope. It just tried to... I guess it was a link there. It's not always smooth sailing becoming a YouTuber. So if you've ever wanted to become one, it's not that easy, according to YouTube skater Dale Decker. The YouTube sensation went on to say that content creation is like working a nine to five job, even if you love what you are doing as it becomes work. He quoted the old saying that when you do what you love for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. That's effing BS. The regular footed YouTuber also said that doing what you love for a living, like what you love just becomes a job. And said it sucks the passion out of it. As we previously reported, fellow YouTuber John Hill received revealed a battle with depression due to the constant grind he had to release on his channel. Like his friend Decker admitted trying his hardest to upload more videos with too much work than he had put in. Even if you stayed positive, Decker said he enjoys skating now so much more because his rent isn't dependent on it. He doesn't need to be burnt out to be a YouTube star because he also has a job. Now I'll explain to you very simply why this guy is wrong. With all due respect, you don't know him. He seems like an all right dude, but I will, t I will, I will tell you, Dale, and if you end up seeing this, like I, I'll break down for you the issue. You don't love being a YouTuber. You love being a skateboarder. So for those of you that are like, I've tried doing what I love and I didn't love it. Okay. Do you love running a business? Listen, it is true that if you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. Fact. And if you love the grind, you will be rich. That's the reality of it. There's other ways to get rich. You know, what's that song from Lily Allen um, that she'll, uh, she'll, she'll get naked and it'll be shameless because everyone knows that's how you get famous. Yeah. There are certainly easier ways to make money. But let's get real. Being a YouTuber is work related to producing videos, putting keywords, making titles, figuring out the proper upload time, setting a schedule. If you love doing that, as I do, you will never work a day in your life. Now, I've got some unfortunate realities to give to you. The first, I'll give you a fortunate reality. You don't need talent. You don't need skill. You don't need intelligence and you don't need capital. There is only one thing you need to succeed and become wealthy, and that is perseverance. Scientific fact. Our very intelligent academic researchers looked at all the data and they said, no matter how much money someone started with, no matter if they had two legs or no legs, the only thing that mattered in success was perseverance. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Rodney Dangerfield didn't get famous until he was like 50 years old. This is a dude that was trying to be in the entertainment industry and nobody cared. And finally, he just broke down and said, I must suck at this. And so he gets up on stage and says, man, I am terrible at this. Nobody cares. I get no respect, I tell you. And everyone started laughing. And he became the master 
of self-deprecating comedy. Superstar movies. And it wasn't until he was in his 50s. I think he was in his 50s because he never gave up. So the reality of this, if you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. But here's a guy, Dale Decker says, YouTube is just a job. Well, of course it is. If you're an artist, if you're a gamer, if you're a skateboarder, if you like playing poker, if you like skydiving, your job is not to do any of those things. If you're on YouTube, your job is to produce YouTube content. If you don't like doing that, you're working nine to five. But I got a solution for you. Get sponsored as a skateboarder and work for someone else. You'll make less money and you'll do less work. Fair trade off, isn't it? And then you will do what you love. Now, hold on there a minute. In the world of skateboarding, what do you do? So for those that aren't familiar, don't worry about the esoteric nature of skateboarding. I'm just going to describe a passion project. You wake up every day, you engage in your passion. If you're a video gamer, what do you want to do? You want to play a video game. I love playing Baldur's Gate 3. Do I make money off it? No, maybe we'll, do, maybe we'll make a video game channel. with. Uh, we have Gamer Maids is one of the channels we have on TimCast.com. Now, let's say you want to monetize that. Well, in skateboarding, you maybe go to the park, you hang out with your friends, you ride around, you feel the cool breeze on your face. But to produce content to make money off of, now you have to perform tricks on camera. Do you love doing that? If the answer is no, you're not doing what you love. Let me tell you a few pointers, and I'll tell you why I'm successful. I do what I love every single day. What do I love? Solving problems. That's it. Forget everything else. Forget YouTube. Forget skateboarding. Forget music. Forget politics. I succeed because I like solving problems. You give me a Sudoku pulse and I'm going to be like, I want to figure this one out. You show me someone trying to solve a problem and I will try to I will try to figure it out. I will try to solve that problem. Whenever I see a mechanism of some sort that I'm not familiar with, I try to engineer it in my head as to how I would do it. That's who I am. We got the UFO. It's right here. You can't see it. The UFO is floating. And people come into the show and they say, how is that UFO floating? When I bought this, the first thing I tried to do is understand how I could make something like that float. And honestly, I had no idea. I think about mechanical objects like a, a, a shift, a clutch, a manual transmission. And I try to, I try in my mind, understand how that would work. Differentials, how it would work. I try to understand how you can have gears turn in one direction, but reverse the direction of the object. That's just me. I love solving problems. So here's my world. I love learning. I love reading things. I love understanding. And I love to I love solving things. What does that turn into? I read the news all day to understand what's going on in the world and why the problems are happening. I try to imagine what's making these things happen the way they do. And I try to provide an option that could alleviate change or alter the course of that issue. YouTube. I love figuring out how do you get more views? How do you get more traction? How do you how do you do it in solving that problem? I love every day waking up, reading the news, and then I want to talk about it. I want to provide solutions. That's why last night, or I shouldn't say last night, but because we recorded this early. But when we had uh, um, Kirk Cameron on, we raised $42,000 towards his project for making kids content. It is a function of the solution. So a lot of people want to get rich. Do you love getting rich? Well, that's not a reality. That is not a thing you can do to make money and do what you love. What you need to understand, my friends, is that some of you, it's too late. No, for real. It may be too late. Why? There are certainly th ways you can discover, like Rodney Dangerfield, a powerful thing that will make you successful and famous. Some people have it. Some people don't. That's a harsh reality. You can certainly be successful. But what I'm talking about is, will you fall into that nook of doing what you love and never working a day in your life and being rich and successful? That's rare. And it's rare because it has to come from development. It has to come from experiences in your life that you are satisfied with. Let me explain. Why is it that there are people who say, I don't want to work? They'd rather do something else, right? Well, if you're someone who would rather hang out at a bar, play video games or skateboard, I got bad news for you. If your passion lies in doing things that don't generate value, you will not make value that you can exchange for goods and services and wealth. Why don't you have those passions? I believe Overwhelmingly, it comes from your childhood development. That being said, 
you must find what your passion and drive is because you may not become a millionaire, but you can certainly become successful and live and live comfortably doing what it is you do love. Let's say you're a skateboarder and all you want to do is skateboard. I don't want to film. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sell things. I don't want to make videos. Then you need to find someone else who will do those things and figure out how they can extract value from what it is you are doing. The unfortunate reality is for a lot of people, there may not be a lot of value to extract. That's truth. But let's say all you want to do is skateboard. Okay, well, it's really simple. Ride for a team, be good at skateboarding, and then all you got to do is ride around a park and kids watch, and then someone else does the work to sell the product and they give you money for it. What if you're not good enough at skateboarding? Then the reality is you don't love being good at skateboarding. I'm, I'm sorry, man. Look, there are, are you willing to take the risks? Are you willing to throw yourself down the stairs? Maybe you're too scared. There are people who love doing that and they love it more than you. You may say, I'm not going to break myself for skateboarding. I love skateboarding. I'm not going to break myself. My point is this. You don't love it as much as they do. There are people who are like, I would give everything to skateboarding, even if it meant the end of my career. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not, a, I'm not a utopian. Some people get critically injured, seriously injured, and their careers end. And then what do you do? Rediscover a passion and build something new. But this is the point. I see this article and, I, and, and a lot of people don't seem to get it because I hear this a lot. Oh, man, being a YouTuber is, you know, like uh, doing YouTube is some people think it's super easy. No, that's work. Nine to five. But I love doing it. I would not do anything else. There was a period for three years where seven days a week with no days off, I was producing uh, like two hours of podcast content. And people are like, how do you do it? No days off. And I'm like, I got to be honest, dude. I wake up on Saturday morning and I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do. I guess I could skate, but I only skate for a couple hours a day when I do. So if I wake up at seven in the morning, as I do all day, and no one else is up, no one's out skating, no one, what am I going to do? I guess I'll make videos. I guess I'll talk about the things that matter to me. And thus, I am doing what I love every day and I make money doing it. Here's the other thing. The more you do it, the better at it you get. And then you're better than everybody else. There is a path to success for you. There is. But you've got to have perseverance. You've got to solve problems. And you have to genuinely love what you are doing. If you are someone who says, I really just want to lay here and read a book. I'm sorry. I don't know how that generates value for someone. What I find with a lot of people who complain about the system and complain about capitalism is that they ultimately don't want to produce things of value. They argue that I should be able to sit around all day playing video games and get paid to do it. OK, well, you have to figure out that path to do it. But there are people who think the government should pay their bills. The government should do this. The reality is government's not doing it. Someone else is doing it. Someone else is working, giving their value and resources to the government who's taking it and then giving it to someone else who's not doing anything. I don't want to be too, 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 too downer when I say like not everybody can find this path, but it is true. Not everybody will find that path or have that passion, but it does exist and everything can be monetized in some way. Everything. So what do I love doing? Let me, let me, let me, hopefully my perspective and what I'm doing may light something up within you and help you find that path to success. I love complaining about things. I mean, I'm half kidding. But I've always loved reading the news ever since I was a little kid. I want to know what's going on. I want to know why it's happening. Maybe that's something in intrinsic to me. I want to know why things work the way they do. I just want to. It's just, sorry, it's ingrained. So I'm reading the news all the time, on trying to understand what's going on. I found something interesting in my life. People complain about things they don't really care about. You know, it's that meme where someone says, I'm mad. And the other guy says, here's a solution. And he goes, I don't want a solution. I want to be mad. And I'm like, oh, that was enlightening to me. Some people just want to be mad. They don't want to find solutions. So I remember when I was younger, I see someone fidgeting with a widget and I'd say, oh, if you uh, flip that around, it'll work. They go, I don't care. Stop. I don't care. And I'm like, wow, they really just literally don't want to do the right thing. They just want to fidget with the widget. OK, or maybe they want to figure it out for themselves. I don't know. And then I was like, I'll do my thing. I'll do my thing. Here's the here's the reality. You know, when it comes to monetizing anything. What do I like doing outside of what I just explained, which I turned into a show? I like skateboarding. I like um, I like playing poker. I like uh, Magic the Gathering. I like watching anime. I like playing video games. You can monetize all of it. But it's not just one thing. 
So you like playing video games, right? It's not playing video games that makes money. It is personality plus video games that makes money. So if you want to play video games and make play, play, play games and make money, you're streaming yourself play the game while you're talking to people. Your real job is entertaining through talking to people. Do you like talking to people? Well, then you're probably not going to make a lot of money doing that, being a streamer. Maybe you're really good at video games. Okay. Well, if you want to play video games 24-7, you got to be really good and you can enter competitions and win money that way. And you don't got to talk to anybody. You just win. Skateboarding. Film it. Produce content. If you don't love producing content, you're not going to enjoy what you're doing. But me, I love all of it. Perhaps that's the real challenge for many people. They don't love any of it. I love making content. I love titling videos. I love making thumbnails. I love every bit of it. I love the internet. If you don't, you need to figure out what you do love doing literally and do that. Maybe you're someone who doesn't want to skate. You don't want to play cards. You don't care about politics, but you love making graphic design thumbnails. There's your passion. You'll never work a day in your life. But for the people who are looking at YouTube and thinking that they can be their own boss, not everybody wants to run the company. Not everybody wants to be the guy who handles the finances. Not everybody wants to be the person placing the ads, writing the descriptions, making the thumbnails. That's not skateboarding. That's not your passion. Well, then clearly you're working a job you don't love. But do you really want to be your own boss? Life is the same everywhere, no matter what. Uh, 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 let, me, let, me, let me clarify that. I'm not saying that like in Afghanistan, it's the same as in the United States. What I'm saying is they did the study where they asked a guy who had become a paraplegic and a guy who won the lottery, how happy were they? And the guy who won the lottery was super happy. And the guy who got injured was very, very unhappy. A year later, they came back and they asked them, how happy are you? And they both said, I'm OK. I'm OK. Because they, they adapted. That's the truth of the matter. That even if you're rich and successful, everybody always says, you know, oh, she's so lucky. She's a star. You know, but she what, what's the what, but she cries, cries, cries in her broken heart. Is that, is that the line? What, what, what is it? If she's so lucky, why do the tears come at night? I don't know. But Britney Spears song, you get the point. Let me tell you, man. We have conflicts. We have frustrations here at Timcast. I wake up. I have my coffee. We deal with problems. There's always problems. I, I work so often, I very rarely go out and hang out at the bar with friends. And there are a lot of people who would rather sit at the bar, work there nine to five. You get to, you, you wake up at 8 a.m. or whatever. You get ready, get in your car, 845. You drive to work. Maybe your commute is a lot longer than that. You work your job. You come home. You get home at six. Man, that is unthinkable to me. The idea that at five o'clock I would be done is unthinkable. What would I do? I mean, I could do anything I mean, go to the casino, I could play poker. I could go skating. There's so much I could do if I was done with work by 5 p.m. Man, but I'm not because I work morning and night. The reality is when I was when I when I was only doing the morning show and I'd be done around like three or four, I'd be like, what do I do with the rest of my day? I'd play video games, watch TV, go to the movies. We saw a lot of movies. We'd go out to eat. And I was like, I'm bored. So we made another show, Tim Cast IRL. Now I do two shows. And if I don't do them, I kind of just said, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, this is what I want to do. There's nothing I love more than doing everything I'm doing. It's not work. But here's, here's the last thing I'll say, because it's kind of just like a rant on making money. And for me, doing this 16 hours a day plus is what leads to more and more, more and more money coming in. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they say, if only I had money, I succeed. I, I would succeed. I didn't start doing this with money. I was working at, I was broke when I got hired by Vice. I was traveling around the country with dwindling savings. I was not making enough money. So I was slowly losing money. Every so often there'd be a big news story. And I'd say, if you want to see me do more of this, you can donate because that's the only way I do it. And I'd make a couple grand per trip, but that was like every other month. So I'm sleeping on couches, 300 bucks for like, you know, crappy rooms in New York. When I started working at Vice, I had no money, none. They paid me a salary. I said, cool. Then I went to work for Fusion. They paid me more money. I said, fantastic. Then I got paid a lot. When I started producing YouTube content independently, it was actually 2012. But when I left Fusion and said, let's, 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 let's go for it. I'm just going to start making YouTube videos. It was scary. It was scary because I had a savings and I was spending a lot of money. I wasn't spending money doing the business. No, no, no. I was spending money on life. 
I was uh, paying rent, buying food, wondering if I'm going to be able to make enough money doing YouTube to turn it into something I can do for the rest of my life or like as a job for at least some period. So here's 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 the nature of it. I never had to work at Vice or Fusion. I could have sustained myself from the ground up with what I was doing streaming. I had no money, did some live streams, and people paid me. I then saved that money. I used that to travel around, and I was sleeping on couches and sleeping outside and traveling around doing adventure stuff. I decided at some point, you know, maybe there's a a path to expand my horizons. I decided to go work for somebody. At any rate, I made money and I saved it. It didn't cost me money to take the job, and I got hired because of the things I had started doing for free. I went outside, filmed things, produced enough to at some point, someone said, I'd like to pay you to do more. I said, okay. Someone else said, I'll pay you more to do more. I said, okay. It didn't cost me money to start. To be fair, okay, like let's, let's be literal. A little bit. I had to buy a, a $600 cell phone at the time. So I had worked for a company, bought, my, bought a smartphone. I was like, wow. So, so you got to start somewhere. Starting this business cost me a couple hundred bucks. Anybody can save up. Literally anybody. Don't believe me? Dude, you can go stand in downtown Chicago and panhandle a couple hundred bucks very quickly. And you could tell people the truth. Hey, guys, I need to buy a cheap GoPro so I can launch a business. And I don't make enough at work. So I'm, I'm out here asking people to pitch in a couple bucks. Guess what? They will give you money. I'm not saying that's what you should do, but you could. Here's how I started my YouTube channel. I had a GoPro 4, placed it on top of my monitor, and I pressed record. And then I would just talk for 10 minutes about how I felt about things. Then I would go for like 13 minutes. Then I would edit the video and then I'd post it every day. One video. That's how I started. Started with like 15,000 views per video. And at at that point, you know, I I mean, it started with a few thousand, like six or seven, but uh, very quickly started going up. And I started making uh, connections from doing it. I started having people uh, say, hey, man, I'd like to collaborate with you. And it was a slow grind. I got to be honest. When I hit like 40,000 subscribers, I thought to myself, like, there's no way I'll ever hit a million because I'm only gaining like 10 subs per day if I'm lucky. But around that point, I was getting like 70 bucks a day and I was like, I'm making money. That's it. Like, I figured it out. It feels good. So what did I do? I did more. I did more. I did more. From one video to I think it was three videos to six videos a day. And I was like, I can do more. I can figure this out. And it works out. For me, I love the journey. You know, I, I, don't, I don't play video games for the endings. I think most people don't. You play for the experience throughout and everything you get to do. There's no end goal for anything that I'm doing. It's all just what's the next problem to be solved. And you build and you build and you build. Here's what I find. A lot of people, they don't want to do that. What they want to do is make just enough and be done. That's fine. But there's a lot of people who are like, I just wish I was rich. I should win the lottery. And I'm like, that's not my existence, right? Mark Zuckerberg was asked if he would sell Facebook. He goes, why? I would, I, I like what I'm doing. I would just make another social media network. Yeah, what's the point of selling? What else would you do with your life? But people are like, yeah, but it's billions of dollars. Don't you, don't you understand? Mark Zuckerberg doesn't care about whether or not you're going to hand him a check for a billion dollars. He's already rich and he's doing what he loves. He wakes up every day with his mission in mind. So that's the secret. Maybe you aren't someone who loves doing what you're doing. You can change, though. They say, what, 21 days to build a new habit? That's what you need to figure out. Anyway, I'm, I'm done ranting on this. I'll give you one last piece of advice that I've given before. There is no no in business only terms. If someone comes to you and says, how would you like to be like Dale? Someone says, how would you like to be a YouTuber on YouTube making videos about skateboarding? He says, it's a nine to five. It's not what I love doing. Would you say no if you didn't love it? That's the wrong answer in business. The correct answer is how much? So I had a friend um, and I told him this. If you got a call from McDonald's Corporation and they said, we want you to work the cashier in Omaha, Nebraska at our location downtown, what would you say? 99% of people I ask say no. No, I wouldn't do it. You know, I talk to investors and business people, they chuckle and they go, how much? And I'm like, exactly. It's a different mentality. 
I got to be honest. I don't believe for me or Mark Zuckerberg or anybody, there's an amount of money that would actually get us to run the cashier at McDonald's. And that's because we've already what I would I describe this as breaking the barrier, reaching a point where you've got a snowball rolling down a hill, allowing you to do everything you want to do and you have nothing to worry about. That means for you, the question is, McDonald's calls you and offers you a job running their cashier in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, if, I'm assuming you don't live in Omaha. Like, you're, like the point is to move somewhere. But if you do, I don't know, I, 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 Iowa. Um, for the average person, if, you're, if you feel like you're stuck in that grind, the question is how much do you need to get to a point where you feel like you can just live and do what you want to do? For me, I'm doing exactly what I want to do, and it makes money. Maybe you want to get to the point where you do what you want to do, and it doesn't make money. You need substantially more than I do. So the answer to the question is, how much? And then it's really simple. If they say 15 bucks an hour, and you go, I am moving to Omaha for 15 bucks an hour. I make 50 bucks an hour already doing my trade. The answer is really simple. If they say 15, still, the answer is not no. It is whatever number you want it to be. So if McDonald's came to me and said, work the cash register, I'd say, I got to be honest, dude, there's no amount of money you could get, you could offer me. And that's true for a lot of people. There's none. Like not even a billion dollars. I got to be honest. Because I'm like, I don't know what I would do with it. I'm doing what I love, sustained, hanging out with friends, producing content. I'm doing everything I love doing every single day. Why would I stop to go work? But for those who are stuck in that grind and working, the response should be 200000 a year. And they're, we're not going to give you $200,000 a year to work the register. I'm like, okay, then I don't take a job I don't want. It's really that simple. There's a lot more to it, but I don't know. I just felt like ranting on this when I saw this. I'll leave it there. Otherwise, I'll go on for an hour. Uh, next segment, I guess, is going to be at 8 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.